Καλώ ήρθατε στο τέταρτο Athens Bar Show ε, και στο Presentation Hall 1, όπου θα παρακολουθήσουμε τον Σιμώνε Καποράλε στην παρουσίασή του. What makes Artesian the world best bar? Ελλάς. Καλιστό πάρα πολύ to everybody. Thank you for uh, being here today. My name is Simone. I've, I've already been introduced very kindly. And uh, I, I'm a bartender. I'm nothing else than a bartender like you, like you, like everybody. And I work in a bar, obviously. I work in a hotel bar, which is called Artesian Bar. And uh, I always had a idea, a vision that a hotel bar had to be classic, with elegant people, classy drink, Manhattan, Negroni, Martinez, yeah? Expensive spirits, expensive champagne, some hookers as well, sometimes waiting for clients, and etc. etc. That's the bar see from the front, and that's the bar see from the left. Normally when Greek bartenders come and see us, they always stay here. Because I work here, Alex, Alex Cratena, the our head bartender, works here. And normally he's very busy making cocktail and I always pour shots for our Greek bartenders. <laughs> So, as I said before, this is my vision of a five hotel bar, five star hotel bar should be. Let's go with the music. Elegant place. You play the thing. Play. Elegant place. Nice. Uh, this one, this triangle. <laughs> I press it. With the mouse. Exactly. One more time, one more time. Slowly, slowly, slowly. A bit left, left. Yes, now play now. Anyway, it's a well decorated with lounges, piano, as I said, classic dream, etc., etc. Should be okay, no? Exactly. This has always been the atmosphere I was dreaming about since when I was a little kid, since I wasn't able. No, no, music up. It's, there's no neighbor sleeping out there. That's it. Music, champagne, and nothing else. I was amazed. I was, ama I was dreaming to go there. So my first day at Artesian Bar, I was entering the bar and saw all the bottles with pourers, with metal pourers, no? And it reminds me to work in a discotheque. I said, this is strange because normally five star hotel bar is elegant serve with the jigger. Hmm? One drink after another drink. I realized that artesian bar serve five, six hundred cocktails every day. So for us, we had a different vision, different vision to approach a five star hotel bar that no one ever thought before and expected as a guest point of view. Now I change slides and I will introduce our art director, our bar manager. He's a panda, which is true. So we got this vision of panda and we said, uh, one second, what about if, uh, one second, what about if uh, we make something that people would never expect? And I want to show you what art artisan really is for us and for our guests. Let's go with the music. No, the music. You go back? I go back, don't worry. We have a David Guetta, guest DJ. Barbara Streisand. This is what I think is artisan today. Yeah? And Barbara Streisand. This is what we listen every day to get inspired, to make people happy. Eh? People never thought they could get something else, or something like this in a hotel. Therefore, if I change lights, we have our new cocktail menu. Everybody makes cocktail menu made of paper, like a book booklet. You open, you read the ingredient and the cocktail, which is fantastic. Uh, we like to go a bit against uh, the rules, okay? There is no written rules. There is no written rules or uh, written things on the stones. You say you no know, when you write things on the stones, yeah? Well, yesterday morning I, was in, I came in Athens and I went to take a walk to the Acropolis. Acropolis, you say, no? The old Greek, uh, fantastic. And I collect some stones. Everywhere I go, I like to collect stones. But then I start to think about what artisan could make. 
What artisan can make with the Acropolis Greek stones? These are normal stones. Yeah? One for you. One for you. You can pass it around. Pass it around a little bit. Please, please, pass it around. Well, if you think about artesian with this energy you would never expect, you get an Acropolis stone, yeah? And you can start to bite it. And they are made of chocolate. Yeah? So that's what we think. We can make uh, everything magic, even the stones of the Acropolis. Especially for American guests. They like to believe on anything, no? <laughs> so these are our menu. There are 15 cocktails. And there are two different ways to, to choose your cocktails. Normally, in a normal bar, you can read all the ingredients. Like vodka, lemon, sugar, and uh, liqueurs. Then the rum, homemade syrup, citrus, and bitters. It's a bit kind of not boring, but it's nothing new for us. So we said, let's use the same diagram, uh, diagram of a menu as a normal perfume shop, or a person that makes perfume for you will offer. So you can choose for something delicate, something fruity, something oriental. We should put a seven, something Greek as well, which is special. We'll do maybe next year. So doing this, people have a new way to discover a new drink, which uh, for sure we love. So instead of selling always like a mojito or classic drink like Cosmopolitan, we thought it could offer something new, as beautiful and as delicious of a cocktail. So going through, I work in an artesian bar, which is in a Regent Street. Regent Street is the main street of shopping, yeah? And every day, especially girls, like my wife, go out and spend all the savings, all the money in shoppings. But I like to watch people doing shopping, especially when they walk through the shopping windows, yeah? These gentlemen haven't done shopping for a while, you can tell by the strange <laughs> outfit, but obviously the lady did. And one thing that I really focus on, mostly of us, every day, we face in front of ourselves. And I was watching these people, not checking what they were selling on the window, but checking themselves as a mirror. Have you noticed it? Have you done it before, I'm sure, in front of a shopping window? We realized that a mirror for a human being is something even more important that we never thought about. Every day, we face ourselves in front of a mirror, either for do makeups, mostly girls, even for shaving, sometimes, or even when you want to also have a sex in front of a beautiful mirror because they can stimulate more feelings. So let's say, let's do a cocktail with a mirror. And we start thinking, OK, we make a martini glass or a normal like an old-fashioned glass, and we put a piece of mirror inside, no? like a garnish. Yes, it's cool. It might break. People might steal it. you know. So let's do something that hasn't been done before. Let's make a mirror. We don't want glass. We don't want cocktail. We want a mirror. So we designed this drink, which is called Forever Young. Thinking about the present, thinking about the mirror, we realized that in our hotel, in the Langham Hotel, in the 1800s, a famous writer and drug addict, Oscar Wilde, used to be there. And we found documents from the hotel and for the police report that he was smoking opium. Opium, you know, in the 1800s, it was very ooh, visual, no? So we create this vessel, which is nothing else than a mirror. So when you drink a cocktail, there is no garnish, there's no cherry, there's no orange as a garnish, but there's the reflection of yourself, OK? We, this uh, took us uh, quite a long time to make it, because this is designed to be drunk standing up at the bar of artesian or sitting down on a table of artesian. So as all proportion of the height of our table mm, and the distance of our chair. So no matter how you drink it, you will always see your face inside. Also. We are not as beautiful as Greek Mediterranean people. And we're always a bit pale, OK? Especially in London. It's never sunny. So we make the mirror slightly darker. So when you see yourself, say, oh, I just went for olives, because they're kind of beautiful tan, yeah? So the drink I would like to present you now, and exactly, the sample can start to go out, is a refreshing combination of a vodka, maraschino, dry vermouth, lemon, and eucalyptus, eucalyptus essential oil. So now very soon you will have a sample of it. And the funny thing is about making presentation like this. You can also make Eastern infusion with the confetti instead of your shakers. So there's nothing more simple than this drink. You can prepare in advance, or you can make it straight away. Someone asks you for a calling, something refreshing, crispy, delicate, and sexy. This is the drink for you. It's nothing more sexy than this because 
you can see yourself as a garnish. And once you place it inside, we also have to design, because the drink is served without alcohol. So this vessel has been made exclusively for us, and it's a double layer, so it's insulated. So no matter how is the temperature outside, the cocktail always will be cold. And we simply top it up with some soda water, and we place it into our vessel, the mirror. So to remind the inspiration of Oscar Wilde, which in our hotel wrote the famous history and novel of The Pictures of Dorian Gray. Do you know Dorian Gray history? Was a person who always wanted to be beautiful and young. But he never wanted to see himself into a mirror because he knew it was getting worse and worse. So we, com we, we com made a combination of the history, Oscar Wilde now hotel smoking drugs, and the present. And how important is a mirror for ourselves in nowadays. So what you try now is the drink which is called Forever Young. It's one of our best selling drinks so far with the new Artesia menu. And you can also try if you want to see the experience. You can pass it around, sip it generously. And the more you see, the more you see yourself becoming younger and younger and younger. Until a certain point, they have to stop to giving you a drink because you became a child. And it's, no, it's against the law, you must be 18 years old. Any question, guys, so far? Shall we carry on? Let's carry on. Oh, these are the mountains of Central America. Have you ever been to Central America? OK, it's not very important because they are the same mountain everywhere else. So you can stay also in Greece and see. Uh, we got inspired about these pictures. Massive high mountains with clouds all around. There is a very famous rum from uh, Central America, which is uh, very well known to be aged in a, such a very high altitude, OK? So when you're there and sipping the rum from the cask, you can see all down the valley all these beautiful clouds. And they never took me there, but I always try to imagine it, obviously. We said, ah, it would taste like a cloud if you would come closer to me at this specific time when I'm sipping with uh, this uh, mellow rum from Central America. So we came to a conclusion. We came with a new drink. It's called Above and Beyond, and it's a blend of uh, rum, Pedro Jimenez, which is quite sweet, gives sweet uh, sherry notes, touch of uh, banana, di saronno, and fernet. And this is the garnish of the drink. Now, if uh, my colleague would, come, would like to come, we start to distribute uh, this garnish to our guests. So imagine you are in a bar, no, no matter if it's a five-star hotel bar or a street bar, and they give you a drink with the ice, like imagine a rum old fashion, basically, no? <laughs> and this is the garnish. You say, what the hell is that? This is your garnish, this is your cloud. The same cloud that come from Central America, okay? So, please Alex, we pass this around, I make a, just tiny small holes so you guys can get the aroma. And inside of the cloud, there's a small bag, you see, it's a color bag. Alex, I got two more for our colleagues from Greece. Inside of this bag, there's a, a small present, which is handmade, is handmade by the same people of Guatemala, who helps the manufacture of rum. And it's called a Kita Pena. It's a small bag with five miniature of dolls. Hmm? They're all females, by the way. And these small dolls, you keep them underneath your pillow when you go to sleep and they're supposed to remove your bad dreams, or especially if you're hungover, if you hang out in these days in Greek for the Athens Bar Show. So once you present this to the guest, you simply open it in front of you, and you invite him to put the hands inside and take the small present. And we're surrounded about this aroma of eucalyptus, sandalwood, pine trees, are all these aromas that you can smell in a forest especially after it's rain. So this was our new way to present a garnish. And it's simply a bag with air and some essential oil of your favorite flavors. You can do, you can make a Negroni, for example, yeah? And you can put some essential oil or orange. So this can be your invisible orange zest because you can smell it, but there's no orange. So tomorrow night at the Gin Joy, we will play also with this kind of garnish. Moving forward, the next drink, we like to read cocktail books, no? To do historical research. That's for you, Maestro. Open it, it's very nice. 
I was watching a lot of documentary about the Greek Empire, the Greek history, and there's no best place to be near today to explain our new uh, way to age cocktails. If we can go with the last drink, yeah, thank you so much. It's very fashionable between bartender and everywhere you go nowadays, in every bar you find small barrels with the cocktails inside, no? The barrel age. Who makes barrel age cocktail? How many people has barrel age? Okay, not many. So we asked for the biggest brands of Greece to sponsor 2 million euro of small barrel cocktail for every bartender to develop the creativity. Makes, it's a good idea, no? We should ask to start for the budget. So in London, it's very fashionable. It was, it was very fashionable to age cocktail into a barrel. Barrel aged Negroni, barrel aged Manhattan, etc., etc., etc. We used to do the barrel aged Mai Tai two years ago. It's nothing new for us. The market has a kind of a saturation, okay? Everybody does the same thing. So we said, what's going to be the next way to age a cocktail? And we thought the next way will be the first way. Because even before human beings create barrels, even before prehistoric people start to make clay, eh, they did an animal skin. And going back during the Greek Empire, everywhere you see, these represent the ceremony of the harvest of wine. So there is Bakuf, there's a satyr, no? Satyr, you say satirist, how do you say? How do you call it? Satyrus, satyrus. Eh? Half animal, half man. It was always represented with a goat skin, yeah? On the shoulder, can you see here? Say so maybe was uh, some uh, artist who went crazy. Let's, let, let's dig more. This is from the Pompeii and Ercolano Museum. A statue would represent a wine skin, normally made with goat. Going through, let's go to Greece. This was a coin of the Greek Empire, represent always with a wine skin. And the more we dig, the more we found proof and evidences of this technique was the oldest technique ever to carry liquid, food, etc., etc., etc. Very soon it will come out the taste of the drink. I prepare a Manhattan. Classic Manhattan, two parts of rye whiskey, one part of vermouth, and instead of the Angostura bitter, I had a little bit of the Serrano, because uh, the bitterness and the taste come from the surface of the skin. When you buy a new leather jacket, when you buy a new uh, leather belt, it smells like leather. Well, this drink won't taste like a wood, because it, it didn't stay in a small barrel, it will taste like leather. So what we did, we start to push these things in a PR. And we, we've been, we didn't invent it, guys. This is 3,000, 4,000 years old technique, don't get me wrong. But we said, let's do it in a bar. This is a proof. It's, it's not a very old picture, maybe from the 1960s and 70s. We are in Central America. They still use this to carry everyday liquid. Hmm? We found pictures with Jared. Jared Brown gave us a picture about some mezcal smuggler contraband during the American Prohibition from the border, from Mexico to US, with this goat skin full of mezcal. So no matter where, not just Greece, Greece, Asia, or Central America, this technique has always and still been used. So we push as a PR way, as a marketing way between bartenders. We believe that modern bartenders nowadays, they shouldn't just get focused on making cocktails, yeah? And make the garnishes. A modern bartender of 2013 should have an open more vision of what is he doing, hmm? how to make something that everybody knows, how can you promote yourself, your bar especially. Hmm? This is also a very good point to start when you want to do a career. That's why you can achieve so many things between your team if everybody tries to push not just the cocktail that I do and I give to the guests, but the innovation how to spread the idea. So what we did, we took these pictures, yeah? And we sold it, let's say, for free exclusively for a magazine. I so said, you will be the first magazine having this. Still they are. Well, for two months, every week they release a new article, OK? For two months, this article has been the most click and view. And it didn't happen before. Simply go for something new. It took us five minutes, sit on the bar, put red socks, and take a good skin. That's it. So the drink you are trying now, you just start to be distributed at a very sensitive, mellow taste of leather, okay? And this is how we serve it. 
we garnish it with a slice of chorizo, Spanish chorizo, because nowadays the only few companies which can produce this for you are from Spain. But why do we put a chorizo on the top like this? Why? You know why? Because it represents what a tapas used to be in the past. Nowadays, tapas are very fashionable restaurants where you can sit down and try the patatas, the tortillas, and the Spanish ham. Yes. But 100, 200 years ago, a tapas was a necessity. Okay? You had to put something on top of your glass. Otherwise, flies, small mosquitoes, and insects were going in. So that was the past, that was today. You have in the leather age Manhattan now. And uh, that's what we think, Alex and myself and all the team. You need to motivate yourself every day before you go to work and try to make your job better. As every day I take a shower, okay? Sometimes I take two. And motivate yourself, stimulate yourself, is like to make a shower. You have to do it every day. Mm? You cannot sit your, uh, uh, can I say us? You cannot see your us eh? every day. Oh, I did something cool yesterday. Okay, what are you going to do today? How can you make your job, your industry better for the future? Thank you so much for your time, Ercalisto Parapoli, and I look forward to see you tomorrow night. Eh?